Okay, go ahead and jump back five years to 2018 in Barcelona for a second. Are you with me? Good. So Barcelona is still under Bartomeu, but beyond their continental form starting to show major cracks, things are still going well domestically, at least for the most part, right? However, a piece of their heart is starting to weaken. The thing that brought them so much success over the years, the thing that brought Spain so much success previously, their midfield. Busquets is still there, but Xavi left three years ago, and Iniesta will soon be on his way to Japan. It's safe to say that Barcelona is in need of a new hero in the midfield. In Brazil, a relatively young player named Arthur Henrique Ramos da Silva Melo is fresh off of his starring role for Grêmio, as he was the Brazilian club's beating heart in their run to becoming continental champions, Copa Libertadores champions, in 2017. Calls for him to be the next Thiago or Iniesta start to be heard in the media, and a move to Barca follows suit. Now, jump back to the present. When you combine the minutes that Arthur has seen for Liverpool's first team, they still, as of April 26th, 2023, 46 matches into Liverpool season, they still don't add up to the 180 minutes he has played for Liverpool's Premier League 2 side, aka their U21 team. Now he seems to be stuck in some sort of purgatory. By all accounts, those at Liverpool like him and have never questioned his commitment, but due to various circumstances, he's been consistently unavailable or overlooked. 13 minutes is all that we have seen of Arthur in Liverpool's first team, and if recent squad selections are anything to go off of, we may not see any more than that. Hey everyone and welcome to Rabona TV, I'm Adrian and I'm excited to be back here in the studio again. <laughs> Thanks for your patience recently as I was dealing with a family issue. Very much appreciated guys. Anyway, if you're new here, that won't mean anything to you. But hey, if you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to the channel and become a part of our community? Sound good? Let's go. When it comes to previous Brazilian wonder kids, Arthur could be seen as a bit of a late bloomer in some respects. After going from Goiás to Grêmio during his youth team career, Arthur was one of the shining stars of Copinha, an under-20 tournament held in Brazil that has garnered a reputation of shining the light on the next big thing to come from Brazil. The most recent player to do so and gain a massive transfer? Endrick, the 16-year-old striker from Palmeiras who has signed with Real Madrid. Anyway, Arthur was great in the 2015 Copinha for Grêmio, and those performances earned him an appearance for Grêmio's senior side in that same year, but he wouldn't get regular minutes in the 2015 season, nor in the 2016 season. Once he was 20 turning 21 in the 2017 season, that's when he became a regular for Grêmio. In fact, he became an integral player for Grêmio in the midfield, often playing alongside a defensive midfielder and dictating the tempo that his side played at. Not a defensive midfielder nor an attacking midfielder, but capable of both roles. In fact, he was played in all sorts of roles in that midfield. A player that his manager Renato Gaucho could rely on to do a job, whether he was played as a deep-lying playmaker, a box-to-box -box midfielder, or as an attacking midfielder. Arthur helped Grêmio through the Copa Libertadores, even being elected as the man of the match in the second leg of the final, despite missing much of it due to injury. In that first half alone against Lanús, Arthur was everywhere. He had more touches than anyone else with 47. Not surprising given his role in midfield, but he was also winning most of his duels, 10 out of 13. By the time he left the pitch with an injury, he also had 88.2% accurate passes. Not bad at all, and Grêmio, of course, went on to win. These two performances in the final were played in front of then technical director of FC Barcelona, Robert Fernandez. There were some rumors about Arthur's ability in Brazil, though for some, they weren't convinced. They had seen just a single campaign with Grêmio in 2017, and while it was a great campaign, it was a relatively small sample size still, if you were to look at it empirically. However, there was still interest from other clubs in Europe as well, big clubs, of course, but none more so than FC Barcelona, who signed the then 21-year-old Arthur for 31 million euros plus 9 million in variables. Barcelona, both people at the club at the time and former players, didn't try to hide their excitement when it came to Arthur Melo and their expectations of him. After one full season and some change at Gremio, Fernandez was ready to compare Arthur to club legends like Iniesta and Xavi, with Xavi himself even saying, quote, Arthur can mark an era at Barcelona. 
The main comparisons would be Iniesta and another former Barca player, Thiago Alcantara, though we got Xavi mentions as well. Arthur was also seen as the man that could provide the final ball or the pass before the final ball. As Cheech once said after a friendly against El Salvador, quote, he always finds the best escape, the best pass out. Even if he doesn't provide the assist, he comes up with the pass that will help a player. So it's fair to say that the 21 year old arrived in Catalonia with some lofty expectations tied to his name and the early going at Barca was fantastic. He made his debut in the 2018 Supercopa de España win over Sevilla. Remember this was before the format change, so it was just a one-off final. He then made his La Liga debut against Alaves, where he picked up an assist. The buzz surrounding Arthur during this first season was still there as his performances did just enough to ensure that his legitimacy wouldn't be questioned as heir apparent to Barcelona's midfield. There were some who weren't overly convinced just yet as his output was seen as lackluster. Whether that's an unfair claim to make of someone like Arthur and the role that he plays is up for debate, given as he's often seen, like Cheech said, as the player who makes the important pass or play before the assist. But when you come to Barcelona and you're being compared to Iniesta, Xavi, and Thiago Alcantara, Cantata, with Xavi himself saying you will mark an era, well it's understandable why some were left with a slight sting of disappointment. However, perhaps that's a bit unfair in some respects, as for the first time in his career, Arthur started to run into some injury issues at Barcelona. Previously at Gremio, some scouting reports would point to how he was always available to his manager. James Nalton of World Football Index even made note of such when writing about Arthur as far back as November of 2017, a few months prior to his move to Barca. As he wrote, as well as being mentally strong, he's one of the more reliable players when it comes to fitness too, having played more minutes than any other Gremio player in the Brazilian league this season. By the way, I've linked to that article below with my other sources. But in Arthur's first season at Barca, he picked up an abductor injury, a muscular injury by November, which saw him sit out four matches. In February, another muscular injury, this time the hamstring, that saw him miss a further four matches. And he closed out the season with more muscular problems, missing the final two La Liga matches through injury once again. Frustrating for supporters, I'm sure, but of course, even more frustrating for Arthur, who also had to put up with the Spanish media Media, questioning his professionalism. However, he finished that season as a La Liga champion still, and would go on to have a fantastic summer as well. Playing in the 2019 Copa America, which was hosted by Brazil by the way, Arthur spent the first match of the tournament on the bench against Bolivia, but after a great performance alongside Casemiro against Venezuela in their second match, he played every single minute henceforth, even supplying an assist for what would be the tournament winning goal in the final. Things were looking great for him. However, Frankie de Jong would join Barca in the summer of 2019, and when you couple this with more injuries, it was another frustrating season for Arthur and Barca supporters who believed in him. A shame, really, as things started well. In his first five La Liga appearances of the 1920 season, Arthur registered two goals and three assists. That's one goal contribution per game when you average it out. But again, injuries plus the addition of de Jong saw Barcelona look to offload Arthur. Initially, Arthur did not want to leave Barcelona and fought against the club to avoid the fate, but in the end, he relented and accepted a move to Juventus. I'm sure his massive wages that Bartomeu was famous for giving out to new signings would have played a role in Arthur wanting to stick around at Barca as well. Now, as for the move, it's important to remember that this was 2020, during the pandemic still, that same summer, and despite Barca and Juve agreeing to swap, in major air quotes, as this was basically an accounting transfer in a sense, but despite them agreeing to swap in June, while well, football had just returned for many countries, the move would only happen once Arthur was finished with his duties for the 2019-20 season with Barcelona. He was still contracted to play for them. Those duties included seeing out the rest of the Champions League campaign, the shortened tournament that was held in August of 2020, of which Bayern thrashed Barcelona 8-2. You remember that? Well, Arthur was supposed to be part of that with Barcelona, but he refused to take part in the tournament, informing the club that he would be staying in Brazil. Bartomeu and the club claimed that Arthur had disrespected the club in doing so, as he was contracted to still play, he clearly felt slighted by the club wanting to move him to Juve in the first place. So why would he go and get injured for Barcelona in a Champions League tournament? Surely that would have been his thinking. But Arthur himself even claimed that he was wrong to refuse to play for Barcelona at that time. And so with his Barcelona career coming to a close, Arthur closed his account with 72 appearances across two seasons, four goals and six assists. 
Joining Juve in 2020 was certainly an interesting time. Juventus had just said goodbye to Maxi Allegri and had installed an unproven manager but legendary individual in Andrea Pirlo at the helm. For Arthur, Pirlo was actually a great manager. As Arthur said, quote, I'm lucky to have a coach like Pirlo. He knows the players' feelings on the pitch very well, and the best part is that he played in my position. He's been talking to me, giving me good advice. I know I have to improve in many areas. For example, looking for the longer pass. I'm playing in a slightly different position here than at Barcelona. In his final season at Barcelona, he was venturing further up the pitch, as you can see from this heat map on the left. When you look at his heat map on the right, however, from his first season at Juve, the 2020-21 season, you can see that he was playing a much deeper role, more of a central midfielder than an attacking midfielder. The shape was also different, as Pirlo began playing with variations on a back three, whether with a 3-4-3, 3-4-2-1, or a 3-5-2. Now, I think it's also important to note that Juve had been on a bit of a decline in Allegri's final years, and with Inter in year two of Antonio Conte in the 2020-21 season, and Pirlo as a new manager on top of all that, it was always going to be a difficult season in Turin. In Arthur's first season at Juve, he was decent. Nothing that made any Juventini scream with joy, but not bad enough for anyone to really scream in anger either. By the time Juve had made it through half of the season and with another injury under his belt, Arthur was mostly utilized as a substitute and wasn't trusted to feature in many matches against top Serie A opponents. Instead, Rabiot and Bentancur were preferred, and sometimes even Aaron Ramsey. Ramsey made 30 appearances to Arthur's 32 that season, so pretty level. And with Allegri returning, top four and a Coppa Italia wasn't enough, apparently. <laughs> we saw even less of Arthur at Juve. Again, injuries didn't help. He was unavailable for the first six matches of the Serie A season after undergoing surgery, and he was only available for two of the final six matches of the season as well. In all, he played less than a thousand Serie A minutes from 20 appearances. And when we did see him feature, what did we see? Well, going from the eye test, as well as in speaking to plenty of friends and journalists who cover Juve, the general feeling was that he was just a little too safe, I guess. For example, I was speaking to Dave from the Juventus podcast entitled Turin Giants. You probably know it if you're a Juve supporter. And his take was basically that. He wasn't doing enough to dictate the play and set the tempo. He was mostly operating as a player who would retain the ball and pass sideways or backwards. Leave all the creativity to others, you know, that kind of thing. Which is frustrating because Arthur was sort of sold to us, us being football fans in general, he was sort of sold to us originally as this very creative player that would dictate the play and dominate the ball. We hadn't seen it. We didn't really get that at Barcelona and we definitely didn't get that at Juve. And so I had to do a deep dive into the numbers to see if this common sentiment was true. And I gotta say, it mostly was. And to play in a side like Juventus, whose average possession throughout the Serie A season was about 50%, Arthur has great stats when you look at his pass completion. That's always been a high point of his. Short, medium, long, his pass completion percentage is always high. However, when you look at his progressive passes per 90 for the 21-22 season, he is only in the 74th percentile in Serie A. Goal and shot creation, he was in the 20th percentile when it comes to shot creating actions and in the 21st percentile when it comes to goal creating actions. Those two metrics are where the disappointment surrounding Arthur will likely have come from as those metrics take into account the two actions, pass, what have you, before a shot or a goal. And clearly, Arthur wasn't offering much there. If the minutes he was afforded or wasn't afforded under Allegri wasn't enough evidence that he was out of favor, then Arthur not being invited on Juve's preseason tour of North America will have sent a clear message as they made it a priority to recruit in the summer of 2022. What comes with that? Offloading out of favor players like Arthur. With Liverpool supporters already calling for the club to recruit midfield options and begin revamping that area of the pitch as it was definitely showing signs of aging out, and with an injury to Henderson on deadline day to go with Oxlade Chamberlain, Curtis Jones, Thiago, and Naby Keita's fitness issues, suddenly Liverpool's midfield options were bordering on non-existent, and thus Arthur became an option for them on that very same day that Henderson limped off against Newcastle on August 31st. Would Liverpool have gone for Arthur if they weren't in that situation? 
I can't say with any certainty, of course, neither could you or your neighbor, to be honest with you. <laughs> but I think we can safely bet that he wouldn't really be the profile of midfielder that Jurgen Klopp typically looks to. But as the saying goes, beggars can't be choosers, and Klopp was likely begging for an option in the middle of the park. So Arthur arrives on loan for four million pounds, with the option for Liverpool to make it a permanent move for 33 million pounds at the end of the season, should they like what they see. He arrived unfit given he didn't have a preseason with Juventus, but he worked hard to gain fitness, making his debut against Napoli in the Champions League, coming on for the final 13 minutes of that match. Seven days later, he played for Liverpool's under-21s in Premier League 2, and by all accounts, he had a great attitude. Playing alongside Stefan Bajsetic in the midfield, isn't that interesting given what the youngster went on to achieve this season? He wasn't arrogant or entitled, he was there to work and get up to speed, and he even requested to be played once again with the U21s during the international break. Arthur was determined. Arthur even had his own trainers and nutritionists to help him gain fitness and equally as important, to stay fit. According to James Pierce of The Athletic, I've linked to his article below by the way, so do check that out, but Pierce claims that Klopp could see right away that Arthur wasn't ready yet. As Pierce wrote, the early training sessions he took part in at Kirkby only served to underline to Klopp and his staff how much work would be required to get him fully up to speed, and they drew up an intensive conditioning plan to aid his progress, with the September international international break viewed as crucial. However, after said international break, not only did some of the other midfielders return to training following their injuries, but Arthur was once again due for a lengthy stint with the medical staff. Once again, it was a muscular issue. Those muscular issues, I mean, they're scary, man, especially when they're of the nature of Arthur's. In early October, he pulled up lame and was deemed to need surgery, thus leaving Arthur to face another three to four months on the sideline. And he hasn't been seen since. And I know you're thinking to yourself, well, hey, wait a minute. We're already in the fourth month of 2023 and he was injured back in October of 22. Well, yeah, Arthur was deemed fit to play as of February and he did so with Liverpool's U21s once again, playing the full 90 for another match under coach Barry Lutis. But he hasn't been seen for Liverpool's senior side. Well, certainly not on the pitch as he made the bench for three matches combined across March and April. So when you look at Arthur's appearance record for Liverpool, he has just 13 minutes under his belt for the senior side. Those 13 minutes were against Napoli when the score was already 4-1 for Spalletti's side. So what's the deal here? Well, you can see Klopp's point of view rather easily. Liverpool's only hope for some sort of semblance of success this season is to finish in the top four. And every time Arthur has been seemingly available for selection, so too as one of Klopp's other midfield options, such as Henderson, Thiago, Fabinho, or Curtis Jones, all returning to the side or returning to form in Jones's case. And so if you're Klopp, the choice seems to be simple. Go with Arthur, a player who is on loan, will be leaving at the end of the season and will perhaps slow the tempo down in the midfield, a guy who couldn't nail down starting spots at Juve or Barca, or go with someone who has worked with you for years and will still be around next season, thus making it worth getting them back into form. It does also call into question of what exactly happens to Arthur next. As mentioned, he was basically informed he was surplus to requirements at Juve and he is consistently left out of the squad at Liverpool despite being healthy now. He hasn't been seen on the bench since April 4th, five Premier League matches ago. And speaking to some Brazilians, including friend of the channel Filippo or tactical manager, the overall vibe that I get is that this isn't overly surprising, which sounds a bit unfortunate to say. There was a lack of buzz in Brazil following his transfer to Barcelona, apparently, and while Cheech went through a phase where Arthur was basically ever-present in the national team during his first season at Barcelona, he fell off hard in his second season at Barca, and he couldn't right the ship at Juve either. There's a player in Arthur, but we just haven't seen it in a very long time, so we don't know what level it's at. He's had surgeries in two consecutive seasons. With the vicious injury and re-injury cycle and the nature of these muscular injuries, the unfortunate reality is that the likelihood of it happening again is fairly high, as we are already seeing the injury cycle repeat again and again at just 26 years old. This has been one of the biggest things holding him back. Right now, it feels like the only way for Arthur is to take a step back in order to take a step forward, take a step down in order to take a step up. 
Find a team where he can be central to their plans, where he will play regularly, hopefully find his form again, and pray that his health won't betray him once again. Thanks for watching guys, and if you enjoyed this one, then do subscribe to the channel, or if you have some commitment issues, that's fine. A simple like will do to help me out. Beyond that, I hope you have a great day and enjoy the football. Ciao.